Okay, hello, this is Paltas Error Instruments. And uh, yeah, we have something new and something really interesting to show. Um, I'm here in, uh, in the laboratory uh, from Stein Kuipers with my friend from This Is Now Rocket Science. And we have uh, developed uh, two different models that are gonna go and come in the pipeline. Um, the first one here is Brinta and the other one is uh, Bubbles. And yeah, Stein, welcome. Hi. Hi. <laughs> yes. Um, Brinta, for people who don't know it, it's a, it's a good breakfast, but also uh, it's uh, something that we all know when we were young, if you grow up in the Netherlands, and it has to do with grains and uh, the small parts of uh, the food. And uh, yeah, what is Brinta? It's a, a kind of granule uh, synthesizer. And there are a lot of granule synthesizer, but yeah, Stein say, I have some ideas and I say, yeah, but it must be feasible and it must be look uh, that you can see what you do. And then we came up with this idea to make the Brinta model with this kind of ring that you see over here. And yeah, we can go in details by that, uh, of course, also later. Uh, the bubbles, we will talk later about it. We start a little bit with uh, Brinta and of course with the sounds of it. Uh, of course, we know Akbar from uh, uh, Intro, or Intro and uh, Morphogene. And uh, there are more uh, granule because it's kind of the year of the grains and the granule. This one is uh, really cool. Uh, why? Because you see what you can do. You see uh, with the ring and the colors like uh, yeah, like this kind of uh, things. But yeah, um, Stein, what can we say about it? It's not a sampler. It's like uh, also an effect. So it's between uh, a sampler and an effect processor actually. Um, yeah, what can we say about it? What, what, what does it do and what's the main difference? Um, it's, it's a very short tape loop. So it, it always records a, a three, three and a half second loop of audio. Mm -hmm. um, and through, through that loop, you can already see here, uh, you, can, you can see the white tape head. It will move around. So you can see where on the tape head you are. And in the ring, you can see the frequency content. So the, the blue bits are high noise. Uh, red, red bits would be bass, bass tones and green bits would be medium tones. So you can see what you're doing. And uh, I like about it that it goes also to the zero point. So if you record uh, something like a piano or something like it, that you can make it really lo-fi and crunchy. Uh, yeah, we can put the sound a little bit on. Yeah, go for it. Yes, I uh, personally like it uh, a lot and it's uh, also not so big. And for people who ask uh, themselves, can you record this on an SD card or this kind of things? Uh, no, you cannot uh, record this on an SD card, but you can save a really a simple way uh, five of these samples. And if you do it off, it will stay in there. And this is uh, so you can go to different uh, kind of samples that are in there that we put in there from the music box ballerina. Let's go a little bit to that. But that was the ballerina. So this, that, this yeah, that was the ballerina. Yeah. This is more like a synthesizer. Uh,
yeah, really interesting. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, it's some uh, development, but at the end, it's really magic uh, how to play with it. And uh, yes, it's also a kind of Dutch things going on here because the Netherlands have some uh, proud. We have some uh, guy called uh, Dick uh, Dick Rademakers or Dick Rademakers. Uh, Rademakers, the 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 Kid Balkan and the Kid Balkan uh, uh, mode is uh, also over here, and he was. Uh, finding the small spot in the uh, 60s, let's say late 70s, 50s, uh, to make find a small spot of sound in the nut lab of Philips. Uh, you can find some research in this, and he's actually the inventor of this kind of way of sampling and looping music for making a composition for making sounds. It's really interesting to use this device in uh, yeah in ambient, but also in in a different kind of. Uh, things can you tell us something about uh, because uh, you see the lights here for play you see the record the audio input is here with this lightning up in what's coming in uh, this is also the output so we see it's something coming out can you tell us about the three presets that we have uh, in different uh, granules yes um then let's start with the first one and uh, the first one you can see here the, the playhead itself um the playheads uh is the starting point for from where grains are chosen right now they're all underneath the playhead so you don't see any of the yellow bits but if i spread now the parameter for this mode you can see that it goes wider and wider around this playhead so if you have it all the way here it will be really tight almost like playing back the original wave but if you go wider it will go further away yeah you so can make a range so have some yes, for this one so It's also uh, good to know that uh, this has uh, no stereo input, but it has stereo output. So it also do something with the panning if you use the, the two out. It depends on which mode it is. And this is all what we're going to subscribe in the manual, how to use these uh, things. But there are three modes in there. This was yeah. the first mode about uh, yes. uh, this. Let me first s switch back to the synthesizer sound here. This makes it a bit easier. Um, The second mode is um, a har it's a harmonic mode, or no, it's a chord mode actually. It it's plays uh, the, it plays the bass pitch that it is, but it also goes up and down in uh, on the right left side. It goes into minor chords. On the right side, it goes into major chords. It goes. It adds a whole bunch of octaves in the major chords, and if you go beyond a certain point, it will remove octaves again, but it adds a dominant. Uh, to the chord. So we'll listen a little bit to this in the yes. same sample. What is that? Uh, this, so this is now it's it's the same synthesizer sound from earlier. Uh, yes. There we go. <laughs> you can control also the play and the rack uh, with control voltage they all have uh, CV inputs and outputs and uh, you can control also all the parameters with this uh, control voltage that's uh, of course the idea of your rack and we make it uh, possible that uh, yeah that you can control anything okay let's check the last mode that we have there okay audio back on all right 
So in this mode, it plays yeah. harmonic overtones of the uh, the main pitch there there is. So right now it's uh, it's just playing the bass pitch. Uh, let's get them shorter. So yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's really a nice device, and uh, I, I like it personally. Of course, uh, we kind of make it, and we make it together. So this is not only an error product; it's also a, this is no rocket science product. We do the development together. Stein is a hero for me in software, and diving deep in this. Um, yes, um, what's good about it is it's going to be also uh, easy to use and affordable. Uh, yes, and also if you have experience with Grenoble that you don't know what's happening but you turn some knobs and something sounds nice, this is the idea with a ring that you actually know what you're doing and that you have more control about the small parts of sound in your rack, that's the idea. We're thinking about uh, a street price of uh, something like 250 um, euro, so this is... Uh, the idea that it's gonna be there. Uh, in August, we're gonna be uh, closed the whole month for development and also for vacation. And in September, we will release this uh, thing. And yes, it's gonna be in a kind of pre-sale. Uh, people don't have to pay it in front, but if you wanna be on a list, it's important to be there because uh, yeah, we're gonna make the first batch of 100 and that's not so much because it can go really fast. Um, yeah, Stein, do you want to say something about it, what you still think? Oh, well, of, of course, the uh, automating this with CV is, is, very, uh, is, is a big thing. Also, I haven't touched the big knob yet during all of this, because this is mostly related to where it starts playing. Can I yeah, of demonstrate course. this? Uh, I'll, 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 I'll drag in my second rack. Is this in, in frame? Uh, it's not in frame, but we can enough. improvise also a little bit. So, but that does we can also tell what's happening. So I have here a gate that that's triggering every. All uh, right. So let's see. If I can. So now the middle knob gonna be triggered. So this is this should be doing something. Let's see if it does. Does it must not must go and play? So maybe it. There we go. There. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> set where it starts after every reset get I get so now it's it's starting somewhere there and if I turn it you can see it changes to a different starting position and now it's always starting there like a kind of tape head on a different spot on a tape modulate the position itself with uh, a wobbler I have here behind the scenes. Um. So you can add a lot of control voltage, trigger gates, uh, CV to control uh, the tape head or let's say it like the knob, the big knob in the middle. 
from the start position till uh, how far it goes and all this kind of uh, thing. We're gonna go more deeper in that, of course, later. This is like a small preview about what we're doing and what we're doing when we are <laughs> free some development. And this is coming in September, begin of September. That's the, that's the plan of the release of this one and shipping of this one. So any questions, feel free to contact us on the website or on this comment on the YouTube channel or anywhere else. I want to thank Stein, of course, for this. Our collaboration with White Ribbit was uh, also really good success and uh, sounds, uh, sounds gorgeous. And yeah, we're going to talk uh, in another video about bubbles. Yes. Thank you for watching for this. Okay, people. Bye bye.